do something slightly different. So let's just do that. We'll do C and then we'll leave D for, um, for someone else to do. Okay. Finite intersections of open sets are open. This one's a little more interesting. Here's a, a couple of open sets that perhaps There's one open set. Here's another open set. And uh, I'll call this one u sub 1 and u sub 2. Why is their intersection going to be open? Why is it that if you have an interior point, uh, sorry, if you pick a point in the intersection, then it, it's interior? Why is it, if I pick a point in here, that it's going to be interior to their intersection? You know, you know it's intersect. It's this point is interior to what? U one and U two. So why is it interior to both of them? Good. Here's one that's completely contained in U one. Here's another one completely contained in U2. Take the smaller one. Good. And if there were finitely many, you would do what? Take the minimum radius one, right? Now, um, why would this idea not work for infinitely many intersections? I mean, clearly it can't because we see a counterexample. But what would go wrong with this idea for infinitely many? The, the minimum doesn't necessarily uh, exist, right? Because this, these concentric circles could get what? Smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So it doesn't have a minimum. Uh, it has an infimum, but it's not going to be uh, greater than zero. That's the problem, right? OK, great. So this is uh, uh, the. This is the, the sketch here is um, there exists a neighborhood R sub i of x uh, for each a sub i. Oh, sorry. What, what, what do we call it? U sub i. So take, um, uh, let's let R be the minimum of the R1 through R sub n. And then the claim. This is the claim is that n sub r sub x is a uh, shows x is interior to the intersection of the u sub i's i goes from 1 to n. And this is a sketch, so I haven't done the work, but I've just indicated how it goes. Okay, that's the main that's the main obstacle. All right. Any uh, any other questions about uh, D follows for similarly by taking complements? Uh, any other questions about the relationship between open and closed sets? Jenny. That's correct. Um, okay, so the question uh, for the people listening on the video uh, was, is there some distinction? Th this theorem indicates a distinction between finite and arbitrary. Uh, is there some finer level of distinction that involves countable, countably many unions and uncountably many unions? Um, uh, and the answer is no, not, at, not as pertains to unions and intersections. Yeah. Um, we, there are there are distinctions between countable and uncountable unions of uh, sorry uh, countable and uncountable collections of things when we start talking about uh, uh, some other topological concepts. Other questions? Okay, good. So uh, let me uh, just indicate um, 
I'll maybe put a, a couple of more definitions up that we uh, probably should uh, at least mention. And uh, and then call it a call it a day. So um, here's a definition that we uh, should probably say. I think I might have said this last time, but not written it down carefully. So what does it mean for one set to be dense in a metric space x and a metric space x? Uh, well, it means that there, there are a few ways to say it. I'll just mention what the book says, and then I'll give you another definition that's equivalent and easier. So uh, the, the book's definition is a set is dense if every point of x is a limit point of E or in E. Okay, so an example of this would be, uh, save a little room because I'm going to give you an alternate definition, uh, Q is dense in R. Because isn't it true that every point of R, every real number, is a limit point of rationals or a rational? Yes. Okay. That is true. Um, but here's another definition. So another way to say this is what? Well, if, if every point of X is a limit point of E or in E, what's it mean to be in E or a limit point of E? In the closure. So another way to say it is you could say if E closure is X. Would you agree with that? That's equivalent. Yes? Or, so I'll, I'll make this a biconditional because you can show that. There's another way of saying what it means to be dense. If E closure is X, that means that any open set, I claim, any open set in X contains a point of E. That's what it means to be uh, X to be a, uh, a limit point. You, you give me any point in X and then any open set around it, I claim will contain a point of E. That's what this means, right? So might as well just say take any open set. So uh, every open set of X contains a point of E. This is uh, probably a, an easier way to think about what it means for one set to be dense in uh, space X. Okay. So just to give you some uh, in intuition for where this goes with other metric spaces, you might want to know, for instance, if I have a bunch of functions, if you're an engineer, you'd be worried about this. You have a, bu a, a bunch of functions. You want to know, can I approximate it by sines and cosines, or sums of sines and cosines? That's what one Fourier analysis is all about. Oh, well, that's in some sense saying, is a certain subset of functions dense in a whole space of functions, right? Are the polynomials dense in a set of all continuous functions? There's a question. Are the set of uh, linear combinations of sines and cosines dense in a set of periodic functions? Okay, it's really what we're saying. Okay, um, that is probably a good place um, a good place to stop. Next time we're going to begin one of the huge concepts in this course, and that's a concept of compactness. What does it mean for a set to be compact? Okay. Um, yes. So on, on the board a lot, you use the double error notation to show that an if and only proof goes 